right, so last week on Better Things and our Breeders' Cup handicapping segment, unfortunately, we came up empty, minus $288, although we definitely got unlucky with Warlike Goddess coming up just short in the Flower Bowl. That she was clearly best and got victimized by a real laughably slow pace, but that happens sometimes. And even so, the rest of the pick five chalked out, <clears throat> so I probably would have only broken even on that ticket anyway. Olympiad bounced back in a big way in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. You have to say the horses behind him were pretty disappointing. And considering the way he ran Saturday, I probably saved money in the Whitney when American Revolution scratched. Overall, I stand at two, plus $270.45. So we're still in the black. There's a couple more of the, <clears throat> these episodes to go. And we turn to this Saturday and the Better's Paradise of Kentucky Downs, which will host two winning your in challenge races for the Breeders' Cup. First, in the day's ninth race, a full field of 12 older males will go six furlongs in the Breed 2 FanDuel Turf Sprint, a fees-paid qualifier for the Breeders' Cup Turf Sprint. And then the 10th, another full field of older males will go a mile and a half in the Breed 2 Kentucky Cup Turf Stakes, Kentucky Turf Cup Stakes, a qualifier for the $4 million Longines Breeders' Cup Turf. The two races can be seen on CNBC from 5 to 6 o'clock Eastern Time. This is where it's at. You know, I talked about Kentucky Downs last week during my interview with C.J. Johnson, but it's some of, if not the best value for an American horse player on the entire calendar. Full fields, low takeout, turf racing. It's a very difficult meet to handicap, but it's also the kind of meet where you only need to be right once or twice to make it worthwhile. Start with the turf sprint, which is interesting because Kentucky Downs doesn't run a lot of six furlong races due to the track's configuration and how long the turn and the stretch are. So the six furlong gate is basically at the top of the far turn, which gives a, you know, a distinct disadvantage to horses in the outside posts. And the heavy favorite in here, Arrest Me Red, just happened to draw the 12 hole. The issue is there's not that much speed to his inside, so he should be able to clear or at least get to the two path in short order. But overall, it's a great betting race where even if Arrest Me Red wins, you can still get paid with some prices underneath. The two long shots I'm most interested in are number four, Charcoal, and number nine, Front Run the Fed. Charcoal's an improving horse who's coming off of two sneaky big races that are better than they look on paper. Two back, he dueled on a fast pace and won the battle but lost the war, finished a close second. Then last time, he got bottled up in traffic for much of the stretch before just getting clear late and again running a narrow second. The thing I like about him is he's got enough speed to lay close to what should be a pretty moderate pace. He's going to be at least 15 to 1. Front Red the Fed is easily fast enough to win this, so he probably won't be his 15 to 1 morning line, but he's dropping out of a grade one in the third start of his form cycle. So I'm happy with either 8 or 10 to 1 on him. And number six, Bob's Edge. It's an impossible either. He's 30 to 1 morning line. He's got a big late kick. He's got a win on turf, and he's got dirt figures that make him competitive. He would benefit if number 13, Artemis City Limits, drew into the race. He would add significant, or significantly more early speed to set up Bob's Edge's late kick. So let's play let's, the play in the FanDuel Turf Sprint. We're going to do $30 to win each on number four and number nine, $10 to win on number six, 50 cent trifecta box, four, five, six, nine, 12, which costs $30, a $10 exact and number 12, arrest me red over the four and the nine. So that's $120 total. In the Turf Cup, number eight, Gafo is clearly the horse to beat. He's running back in just two weeks. We don't even see, we never see this in racing. He's wheeling back just 14 days after winning the grade one sword dancer at Saratoga. You love to see it. Number three, Temple, and number four, Arklo, look like his main two challengers, but neither is going to be a particularly enticing price. So I'm going to throw in two long shots. First is number one, Red Knight, who was second to Arklo in this race in 2020. His form wasn't great last year, and he's eight years old now, so who knows if he can still really run, but he was transferred to Mike Maker over the winter, and Mike Maker just cannot do any wrong at these Kentucky Downs meets, and Red Knight won his first race for the barn off the layoff, and number two, Breakpoint is interesting as well. He, he went wire to wire going further than this, going a mile and three quarters, I think to my knowledge, the only mile and three quarters race in America, the San Juan Capistrano Stakes at Santa Anita. He went wire to wire despite setting pretty honest fractions. The half in there was 47 and four. So that was a pretty impressive effort, even though we only got a 91 buyer. So I'll try to get those two to win or at least get in the number. I'll also throw in number 12 highest honors underneath for Chad Brown. So the play here in the Turf Cup Stakes is a $1 trifecta, one, two, eight with one, two, three, four, eight, 12 with one, two, three, four, eight, twelve. So that's sixty dollars. Five dollar tri trifecta, eight gafo with three, four, twelve, with one, two, 
in case the one and the two run third and it chalks out on top for a cost of $30 and then a $10 exact eight GFO with one, two for a cost of $20. That's a total of $110. The total amount invested over the two races is $230. We'll put all those plays up on the screen. Tune in from 5 to 6 Eastern on CNBC as we hopefully make some money and build that bankroll while seeing two tickets punched to the Breeders' Cup, which is, which is now less than two months away on November 4th and November 5th at Keeneland. Good luck if you're following along. Mm -hmm.